Uh, let's talk about, um, first of all, the Blackwell lineup from NVIDIA. Now, it did deliver a proper Halo product. We had the RTX 1590, which is basically, I don't know, maybe 25 to 35% faster than the 4090, which is, bearing in mind, it's very difficult to find the limits of a 4090 um, on today's games if you're, you know, if you're using DLSS or whatever. So the concept that you have that big step up in performance um, with the 5090, plus you've got frame generation on top. It's pretty awesome. It's an awesome product. Um, but it is awesome, I think, to the point where I never quite feel that I'm hitting the limits of what it's actually doing. Um, and But I guess, you know, when you've got a um, like a 240 hertz 4K monitor, then you can actually start to see it fly, particularly with uh, frame generation and multi-gen. But um, the rest of the lineup, um, you know, 5080 was coming in about sort of 10 to 15 percent faster than a 4080 Super. And it's, you know, the thing about Blackwell is it was created on the same process technology as ADA 40 series. So the gains were always going to be more limited there. Uh, it kind of um, possibly suggests that this is the way things are probably going to be in future based on the fact that uh, moving to new process nodes is is going to become rarer mm. and when you do move to those new process nodes the chips are going to become more expensive which means that you probably will get like fewer CUDA cores relative to what you had on prior gens and stuff like that so it's kind of like a, a transitionary product in many ways blackwell um alex also came with um various and unexpected from nvidia to be honest driver problems yes the first few months uh, which definitely put a dampener on the experience. I don't know, though, reaching the end of the year, we actually do have the cards mostly at MSRP. Uh, nothing better is going to be coming along for a good old while. Uh, I do think it's probably a good time to actually start to consider buying one of these things before... Who knows what happens? The yeah, yeah, GDDR7 modules. <laughs> but yeah, thoughts on Blackwell? Well, I, I think Blackwell's introduction at CES was fantastic um, just to because it was NVIDIA showing that they're improving their software package over time. It came with the launch of the Transformer model. MFG, I think, is a very convincing uh, presentation. In fact, I'd recommend it in most games for those people who do want to have a 240 hertz experience at all or even higher, 360, what, ha what have you. And I think all those things are great. It's just when you start looking at the, the price versus previous gen and you just kind of recollect to PC days of your and you think of like a GTX 970 and just you get you get like a little bit sad that there's no like absolute killer product until you get to the ultra high end where the 5090 is an unstoppable beast, but you're paying ridiculous money for it. Right. And I feel like since it doesn't like with the other products, it starts as start as you're going down the line, you start making concessions, even though you're already making, you're already giving out a lot of money, I would argue. And that's, that's the thing that always kind of saddens me <laughs> about the current market. Uh, and that you see that also t somewhat as well with the other manufacturers, uh, AMD and Intel, they all have their own uh, little things that don't line up in the product, I would say for their price always. Um, but on aim, uh, but on the Nvidia side, the lower you go down, it does really feel you can start to feel it a lot more, especially when you get into the 5070 range, which I think is a good GPU for its core. But I still think when you have that much power as that GPU has, you want you always want a little bit more versatility. And I think 12 gigabytes is limiting to the versatility of of, of such a powerful GPU. It could easily be a very amazing 4K GPU. Uh, it's just that you'd you'd have to be a little bit more conservative when you load up a game and making sure you're not pushing texture quality too high or some games have issues where like, this is a this is a gpu that can do path tracing but as soon as you turn on path tracing due to the size of bvh and everything on the gpu you have to maybe then start turning down uh things like texture quality which that's i mean that's a trade-off image lighting is really good but like it's just one i you'd, i wish you didn't have to make based upon the amount of money you're spending. So that, that, but, but also we also had some interesting stuff at the beginning where Blackwell did stretch its legs over drivers over time. It did get a bit better over time, but just the initial wave of reviews where we saw like the 5080 and 4080S, 
I know it did eventually pull ahead in some in some key titles and everything like that. But like the initial reviews, I thought looked really bad. Where it was like, what is the point of Blackwell if it's almost running the exact same? Uh, um, and as we were just discussing before this, the fact that there isn't a in the lineup of Blackwell cards, there is no replacement for the forty ninety. I also feel is an issue because. Um, 4090 is going to be eventually no longer produced. It was already a Halo product anyway. And there was no way to get into that upper echelon of VRAM on the NVIDIA side where there's no problems in game. 24 gigabytes, zero problems in game. 16 gigabytes, you'd be surprised. There can be occasional problems in games if you're running the path tracing ultra ridiculous stuff, you know, uh, and or just some titles that have really terrible VRAM management. There was no, there was no like middle range card between the the forty eighty and uh, fifty ninety to get that forty ninety experience uh, within Blackwell, and I felt like that was a really big missed opportunity. I always feel like the fifty eighty should have been a bigger card um, with a different bus uh, and a just different VRAM configuration, even if it had the same level of performance. I think it would have been a great thing to just have more VRAM on such an expensive GPU. But um, yeah. that's just me. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think um, the way I'm looking at it is um, hmm, um, the, the 5080 is essentially half of a 5090 and you're paying half of a 5090. But yeah, there is this yawning chasm in between. You can overclock a 5080 and in many cases it gets within spitting distance of a... 4090, but it's very much title by title basis there. And you shouldn't really be overclocking anyway to, to get that performance, in my opinion. The, the fact that there is overclocking head from left over on the, um, the 50 series, I find kind of interesting. I don't know why it's there. Maybe it's, you know, to facilitate, uh, a super refresh in, in combination with extra memory. I don't know. Um, the 5070 Ti is, I think it probably at the sweet spot, you're yeah. getting the 16 gigs of memory. The issue is that AMD has a very good competitor there, the 9070 XT, that is a fair amount cheaper. Um, then you get to the 5070 itself. Yes, you're right. The, I don't know, though. I don't think you're looking at running alt for best of the best or the 70 class series anymore, which presents issues of its own, but it is what it is. It is a pretty good product, I think, since it kind of dropped beneath MSRP. I think a lot of, you know, in retrospect, going back to the reviews, a lot of the concerns were about the fact that you couldn't actually buy the products at MSRP, but but now you can. And I think, you know, looking at both um, Blackwell and um, and RDNA 4, there aren't really that many quote unquote bad products anymore. Um, right. uh, apart from the eight gig versions of 5060 Ti and 5060. Um, I, th I think, you know, a 5070 is a perfectly fine product. The one issue that I have in terms of frame generation, though, is it becomes more expensive the lower down the stack you get in terms of um, compute power that it requires or frame time rather more specifically. So its utility diminishes the more you actually need it. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have to, you have to make some pretty, you know, you have to really think carefully about your settings when using MFG on a 5070. And you need to be looking at latency and stuff like that because it does start to add up. Um, so I think there's a lot of work NVIDIA needs to do in terms of um, uh, the journey from making frame generation a value-added feature into a, into a kind of like a staple like DLSS super resolution has become that journey. I think they're still only about, I don't know, 30 to 40% of the way there. They still need to solve that latency problem. And while they're buffering a frame, I'm not sure how they can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very interested to see if there's any kind of new DLSS coming next year. Um, yeah, but overall, I mean, the 5060 would have been great if it had more memory. Um, but I kind of understand why it is what it is. 5050 never even looked at it, but it is basically a 4060, right? I just think that's okay. You know, a, a, a okay, not great. But at the same time, uh, it kind of highlights again that the 5060 should have had 12 gigs. However, that was, would have been managed. Yeah. Um, interesting though, nonetheless. Um, Oliver, thoughts on Blackwell? Yeah, I feel like you guys have covered the bases pretty well here, but. At the very top end of the stack, I think Blackwell is kind of cool because the 1590 extends NVIDIA's performance lead there at the very top end. But it's not meaningfully more efficient than the 4090, so you're kind of just putting more wattage into more performance, which yes. 
isn't great. Um, also, the 4090 was already so fast, and I feel like the 4090, most of the software that I could run on it wouldn't saturate that card, and certainly wouldn't saturate a 5090. Indeed, a lot of the card games that I'm playing nowadays will run at like 150 or 200 watt load on <laughs> my 5090, which is pretty funny. The fans barely even need to spin up at that point. Um, so it's not not very stressful unless you get to like the higher end rage racing workloads, higher end path racing workloads, then you can really push it. Uh, but obviously it's the fastest card in the market. That's quite good. Blackwell in general, I mean, at an architectural level, there are things that look really cool, like the dual pumping of integer math, the two Xing of ray triangle intersections on the RT cores and things like that. But it doesn't really show up that well in the benchmarks, maybe in path racing workloads, maybe in RT workloads a little bit more, but that's not ideal. Uh, the cards are good enough, but there's not really that big improvement uh, gen on gen architecturally that you're looking for out of NVIDIA that NVIDIA is often known for delivering here. Yeah, I think overall architecturally, it's not that exciting, at least at the moment. There may be some things in the future that will come out that, that are more interesting with that architecture, but I think that um, at least at the high end, it's cool, but Aside from that, it's kind of not that amazing of a generation of product, I think. Right, yeah. I think that I'm going looking at the pricing side of things. Now we are at MSRP. It's quite interesting that the 70 class products, I mean, there was a huge price bump with 20 series when it went up to <laughs> went up to $500. Right. But today's 70 class product is $550 uh, uh, MSRP. And you can get it for lower than that on um, certain sales at the moment. So, you know, in that respect, that particular part of the market, I think, is actually done okay. It's just... Nvidia kind of shot themselves in the foot with the with the uh, fifty seventy by saying forty ninety performance, um, which you know, come on, that's, yeah. that that didn't that didn't fool anyone. Um, <laughs> that was a really bad move because now you have actually got these sub MSRP products. I actually find the uh, fifty seventy quite recommendable, um, but you know the thing is, all of those reviews that you're going to find online are going to be talking about that really bad marketing point from almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's that was a really bad move.